Okay, I'm sorry, Asa. Um, it's okay. I will share with you later since we are we're recording. <laughs> okay. Um, but as I was saying, is that they have so many, so many resources at the STEM Library Lab, but one of which is this water kit here. Actually, I'm having a little trouble seeing it. Oh, my stuff. Ah, there it is. So here and inside of it, there is six different containers, which makes it really easy for doing stations in your class. Right. And inside of it, there are six of these. As you can see, I have them all over here. And inside, there is 12 different water molecules like this. And then there is also chlorine and sodium. And one of the things we're not going to use today is there is some methane in there and um, some ihydroxyl. And actually, ask if you can mute yourself. That would be great. All right. So here we go. Um, kind of how this presentation will work is sometimes I'll be teaching you like you're my students and sometimes I'm going to stop and talk to you like the awesome teachers you are. Okay. All right, so the objective that I'm going to address using this model is a seventh grade objective, um, being able to analyze data and determine whether or not a chemical reaction has happened. And you're not sharing your screen. Oh, it says you're sharing your oh. screen. Oh, okay. Apologies. I'm you can see it. it. This there is new go. to Got us. Yeah. All right, it's cool. So yeah, it's um, physical science 1-2 for seventh grade. Um, and it's being able to determine basically whether or not a chemical reaction took place. And so the structure of the lesson is using a 5E lesson plan where the first is just a short demo to get the kids interested. And then the kids take the time to explore with the model itself. What you'll do is you would give each group one of these, uh, containers and then you'll have some sort of a tray. I definitely recommend one with the lips on the side and the STEM lab has plenty of them too to be able to use uh, to make it easier so they don't fall on the floor. And then after that um, to explain what the kids discovered and why they think they discovered like what happened with the models and talk about how it relates to chemical reactions. And finally the fifth E is to evaluate and complete an exit. Okay so First, the engagement is talking about water's states of matter. You know, at this point in seventh grade, the kids have definitely talked about this. So you would ask, you know, okay, so what are the main states of matter and how does that relate to water? At this point, are we asking? Um, you're welcome to. Um, so, I mean, you can see, okay. So you can see I've included these gifts here is that you know, we have solid, we have liquid, and we have gas. And you can actually take these models to be able to demonstrate them using different containers. So if you wanted the students to actually then go ahead and try to make a solid, it's gonna be a lot more organized with these models. And a liquid is gonna kind of flow, and a gas is gonna be a lot more spread out, like as if it's on this tray, it's a lot more spread out. Um, But one of the things I want you to think about, something that we always kind of take for granted as a science teacher, is thinking about when I take the compound salt, sodium chloride, and I add it to liquid water. Generally, you know, I'm just going to add food coloring for effects. You can see it. Um, but in this case, so if I have some water that's green, so you can see it more easily. And if I add salt to it, well, let's think about this. Is this here, is this a physical change? Or is it a chemical reaction? Hmm, something to ponder, something to think about. So we're gonna really explore that today. So at this point, I would give the students either on Google Classroom, Google Docs, a worksheet, these five different questions and they would actually go ahead and take the time to go through and explore these five questions using these models. So the first one is trying to figure out, okay, oops, is of these, and mind you, we're talking about you have these molecules and then you have 
the blue and the green, is telling them, okay, well, you have hydrogen, you have oxygen, you have sodium, you have chlorine. Which one is which? Which one is which? So they would be sitting here thinking about, okay, well, how, how can I figure this out? Well, then, of course, like start playing the game and making all of this noise, but then figuring out, okay, well, hmm, I see that I have the two whites are bonded to the red or they're attached to the red in some way. I see that the green is larger than the blue. I see that they're magnetic. And at this point, really, I would refer students, if they're stuck, refer them to the periodic table. Be like, okay, we've been talking about the periodic table. What evidence can you use to really try to figure out which one is which? And you wanna make sure you give them time to really kind of construct this knowledge. So they can see which ones end up bonding to each other. They can see that the oxygen is permanently bonded to the hydrogen, but they might not have figured it out yet. Um, the next question would be, how many different arrangements can you make with six water molecules? Well, if this is what they have, and if they haven't figured out that this one is water yet, well, they're going to know, oh, okay, well, this is, I definitely have at least six of these. So this is water. So that clue in and of itself in that question might really help them figure out that, okay, I know water is H2O, H2, two hydrogen and oxygen. So I know, okay, this is the water. And then they sit there and they get a chance to play with it. They can see that with the arrangement, if I have six, I can make different shapes. And we're gonna talk about the different ones. The third question is to think about, okay, if I have two water molecules, what parts are actually attracted to each other? Why do they think that is? And how do any of these elements and compounds for question four, how do they interact with each other? If I have the sodium and the chlorine are interacting with the water, how is it interacting? Um, and finally, is once they've figured out which one is sodium and which one is chlorine, and even if they haven't figured it out, they can still do the fifth question is determining, okay, how many water molecules can we actually attach to each of these different atoms, okay? So that would be the first um, one point of contingency. I would want you to make sure as you look actually on the sodium here and then the chlorine here is there's actually these little circles on there. Those are the magnets in and of itself. And you'll notice that sometimes one of the small limitations of the model is it's, it's easy for the green to attach to the white, but sometimes they might be able to get the red. It's not as easy with these two, but it's a lot easier with this one. I can get the red to attach appropriately, but then the white will attach in the middle of those. Can you see that? Yeah. So you wanna be mindful full of that um, with your students is be like, okay, if you're, if you're having them interacting, you want it to interact on the magnet, not in between. Okay, some of the groups might get that and then that might turn into a misconception. Excuse me, Todd, can you let me in? I'm trying to come on my personal computer so I can see Sam better. Yes. All right, so we talked about with the water molecule identifying that okay the red is hydrogen and the white excuse me the red is oxygen and the white is hydrogen and then the next step is trying to figure out okay why is this green one chlorine and why is this blue one sodium well this can be done when figuring out how they interact with the water and so you can see that the chlorine ends up interacting with the hydrogen and the sodium interacts with the oxygen. Well, how would that lead me to believe, well, why is one interacting with the other? Well, I know that based on the periodic table, and I believe that's on the next slide. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so based on the periodic table, we know that uh, chlorine is a halogen, and therefore it just needs one more electron in order to fill its energy level. And you may or may not have gone this far, but we know that in the periodic table, all of the elements like to act like the kings and the queens of the periodic table, the noble gases. And so in order to become like 
In order to become like argon, fluorine only needs one more electron. Well, what are electrons? Electrons are negative, something the kids learn in fifth grade. All right, electrons are negative, so it needs one more. If this is negative, then this means, and it's attaching to the hydrogen, well, the hydrogen is positive. Okay, that leads you to believe that this is the actually fluorine. And in the case of the sodium, the sodium, well, if you look in the periodic table, Na, nah, you know, like this, nah, don't be salty, okay, is sodium actually wants to lose one electron to be able to act like the kings and the queens, like neon, on the periodic table. And so it's actually going to lose one electron, lose negativity, become positive, and interact with oxygen. You can learn this further by looking at hydrogen, the white one. Well, since hydrogen is just like sodium in the first column, hydrogen, of course, isn't the same as its reactivity is not the same as sodium, but it is in that same first column. And so it has one outer electron. It has one outer electron, and that means that it's also positive. Oh, kids are going to know at this point that opposites attract. The positive hydrogen is going to attract the negative chlorine. So now this is chlorine. Therefore, the positive oxygen is going to, excuse me, the negative oxygen is going to attract the positive sodium. So we figured it out. All right, which one is which? So the next question, number two, is how many different arrangements can you make with the water molecules? Your students, you want them to have six, all right? They can work with more, of course, but when I had students do this activity, they worked with six of them and tried to figure out different arrangements that they could come up with. Here is just a few on the screen. You can see you can make a ring of them. You can see that you can make as many as you can really figure out. And one of the things that I included this drawing for that's unique is you can show students different arrangements and then turn it around and show them that it's the exact same arrangement, just in a different way. So you can have a chain like this. You can turn it around and have four connecting one way and two connecting to the top. This, although this doesn't necessarily address the objective of physical and chemical changes, it's important to really start developing students' spatial awareness of these, of these models. So that way, as they develop further in their science, then they can have a better understanding of organic chemistry, chemistry, how do these things actually interact? And then they might start questioning, well, why is it that a water molecule is attractive in some way? You know, why is it that one side of it is really positive and one side is negative? Because that's inevitably what these models are doing is it's showing that these elements, excuse me, these elements, and in this case, this compound can actually have a form of polarity. And that will be a new vocabulary word you might want to talk about with your students, is the fact that water is in fact polar. And so they can discover this by thinking about this third question is what parts of the water molecule are actually then attracted to each other. Well, we talked about hydrogen being positively charged and the oxygen side being more negatively charged. And you can see that is as the water molecules interact with each other, those opposites, in fact, attract. And that's how it's possible that these six water molecules can form a ring, how they can form a chain. And this actually leads to so many different processes and models going on in our bodies and in the world around us. Um, and so you can show them not only with the model, but also with pictures and how that actually happens. All right, question number four is, how do these elements and compounds actually interact? Um, one of the also things I really like about using models like these is you can help your students differentiate between those vocabulary words. Like if I have one and it's one kind, it's an atom. It's also an element. Like if I have many of these blue ones together, well, it's 
an element. Even though there's two atoms, it's an element, it's one kind, okay? But then if I introduce another one, now I have, okay, now I still have one, two atoms, but I have two different elements because one is the sodium and one is the chlorine, two different colors helps them to understand that. Um, and then we know, of course, that when we have two or more elements chemically combined, we have the compound. So it's figuring out what they've already figured out, but just either writing it out, okay, <laughs> just either writing it out or explaining it orally is how they actually interact with each other, is that the sodium, of course, bonds to the chlorine, sodium chloride, okay, then also, of course, the Hydrogen bonds to the oxygen, forming water, commonly known. And then also, sodium would interact with the water molecule, like that, from the positive sodium to the negative oxygen side, on either side of it as well. Important to note that. And then in the case of fluorine, it's going to interact with the hydrogen side. So thinking about it, like, why is this? You can even get to the point where if you, you are trying to figure out, okay, well, what's the most that I can have the water molecules actually bond to the different elements? Well, if I have, you know, the chlorine, I mean, they can say, well, it has, it has a SAM, it has six magnets. So of course it's going to bond to six, but then actually show it, you know, how, what about when it comes to the sodium, you can see it's actually like with six, it's bonding to six. So it'll end up looking like this. Give them time to explore, give them time to construct this knowledge. So show them the model. Here's a picture of it, if you can see it on the presentation. But it's what actually going back to the salt water, we were talking about at the beginning, this is just the regular water, excuse me. The salt water here is that when you add the salt to the water well what's actually happening well right now i can still see some of the salt at the bottom you know here you can still see some of the salt at the bottom but we know that if i take a stirring object and stir it up it can completely dissolve and once it's completely dissolved what has happened is actually the sodium the sodium and the chlorine the bond between the two, the ionic bond, but we haven't gotten that far with seventh graders, but that bond in between the two is going to break. And these atoms are going to associate with the water molecules. And you can see it in this picture, two different ways to show it, is that notice with the positive sodium, it's gonna be surrounded by the negative oxygen sides. Whereas with the negative chlorine, it's going to be surrounded by all of the hydrogen from the water molecules because of the polarity. And this actually is related also to the solubility of salt, is the fact that it is in fact soluble in water, which means that it dissociates in the water. And you can see that with these models. Sometimes it's hard to conceptualize like, well, okay, I know when I put salt in water or sugar in water and I stir it up, it goes away. And if I drink it, which in this case, it would be safe, um, but I'm not gonna do that in the lab because I'm a scientist and we don't drink stuff in the lab. It's only sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> and um, so in that case, you wanna make sure that you, you know, you're being safe, of course, um, in the lab. Here's another way to show it, the orientation of, the water molecules and how they orient to interact with the salt. So here's what it all brings back to is what kind of reaction is this? Is this a chemical reaction or is it a physical change? Well, we've talked about, as if I'm talking to my students, you know, we, before we talked about chemical reactions and physical changes, you guys, Remember I lit that dollar bill on fire, for example, and that was a chemical change, right? Because you had the flame, for example, that's something I like to do with my students, because it's fun. Um, but in the case of 
salt, when you have sodium and you have chlorine, well, if it disassociates in water, the bond is broken. Isn't that what happens in a chemical change that you have bonds have to break in order for some sort of chemical reaction to occur, right? At this point in this lesson, I would have students, you know, think in their group, discuss, think about what is the evidence that you could argue for either side. Potentially, you could even, you know, say that some groups are going to be, okay, I want you guys to argue for the chemical change side, and I want you to argue for the physical change side. You could set it up that way um, instead of make it like a debate. But in this case, it's important that in the end, that the kids understand that there's not always this defined one or the other, but some and most may argue and conclude in the end is that with sodium chloride, when it dissociates in water, this can be undone through either evaporation or boiling the substance and being left with the salt back on the bottom. And although the bond is broken, there isn't necessarily a new bond being formed. When the sodium is interacting with the water here, this is not a strong bond. They're just associating with the water molecules. The same is true in the case of chlorine. It's not a strong bond. So a new substance hasn't necessarily been made. And so if we bring it back to kind of where we've either you have your students about to learn in the future unit, and this is the beginning of it, getting them to think about it, or more of a conclusion is that with physical changes in that change, you don't get a new substance. And it's a, usually easy to reverse it. Not always, but usually. And in the case of a chemical change or a chemical reaction, you're always gonna get a new substance. Bonds are going to break and bonds are going to form and you're going to get a new substance. And then you can talk about some specific examples with your kiddos. And finally, um, is to make sure that you, your lesson, in fact, stuck and you know made sense to your kids is have them actually write this out. When salt is added to water, is it a chemical reaction or is it a physical change? And they might say both in their answer, which is fine, but most importantly is you want them to use evidence that is sound, that makes sense. And um, I've usually done this in the past on Google Classroom because it's a lot easier for the students to submit their Google Doc of their answer. But you can do it on your pod. You can do it on Edulastic. You can have your students work in their composition books on paper. Okay, so just some vocabulary that we review. Physical change, chemical change or reaction. Um, Reactions and products and a chemical reaction, chemical bonds, and some solubility. So one of the things I want you guys all to remember is that although models, they don't show everything perfectly, like how the instance with the sodium, that it's possible to get it to incorrectly bond with the hydrogen in between the magnets, that there's gonna be some of your students that are really observant and they're gonna see that. But it's important to point out that, okay, yeah, that may be true and it might not be perfect, but the model is used to help us gain a bigger understanding on the concept. Just like when we use a big globe so you can see the earth. There's not very many of us that are lucky enough to go out and see what it looks like from outer space. But we use that model to help us better understand it. These models are really useful of getting kids to start understanding how polarity works, how solubility works. And there's so many more things that is available on the, the website where this comes from. Um, it's talking about hydrogen bonding. Things, some things we didn't talk about is adhesion of water and cohesion um, and how that's related in plants and also in our bodies and our capillaries. Um, we can talk about surface tension and talk about changes in states of matter. We just mentioned the states, but you can talk about the actual changes in those states. Not even included. Some different objectives that could relate when it comes to fifth grade, sixth grade, some others for seventh and for eighth grade. So yeah, 
that's uh, my presentation on these models. Who has questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, so yeah, let's, um, I want to, well, first I was going to say we can unshare the screen and then we can maybe okay. unpin videos and we can see each other. Um, but no, let's, let's open it up to questions. Get back to this awesome thing we're going to start my brother. I want one of these fun building cabinets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some familiar faces. Hey there. Um, as you were going through this, I guess the first question that the student. I would have said uh, compound, then why isn't the chlorine now poisonous to me? And I don't know if we, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if you have the answer to that because I actually don't. Yeah, but no, but that's important to access that prior knowledge of the students, right? You know, when you have fluorine by itself and it's not chemically bonded to something else, it has certain properties. But when a chemical reaction occurs and like the, when chlorine ends up binding to sodium, the chemical properties actually change. That, that ionic bond allowing the sodium to share its one valence electron with the chlorines um, seven and creating a full shell, it changes those properties. And so um, it makes it so it's not hazardous. And that's really the one of the really cool things about chemistry is that if you just break a bond and now here we have a new substance, it can be very different chemical properties. One is poisonous and kill you, and or you know poison you at least, and the other we can eat just fine. <laughs> you know, like we said, if, uh, open the floor to questions, but also if you either do teach seventh grade and you're thinking about how you would do this, or you teach another subject and you're thinking about how you might incorporate this into um, your grade level or subject, or questions about how you might incorporate it into your grade level or subject, um, love to invite people to, to jump in. We also have a pretty um, small, I mean, this was intended to be a small group, but we have a small group and I wouldn't, uh, I'd be glad if people wanted to introduce each other, not each other, themselves, um, so we could maybe, uh, you know, meet each other and get a feel for who's in the room. Okay, I'll talk. I'm Afka. I'm sorry, I changed computer, so my screen has, uh, I can't, you can't see me anymore. And I teach at Lycée Francais uh, with Dora, who you might be seeing at the bottom of your screen. And uh, I have a comment question, Sam. Can you check for us, please? The, hydro the hydrogen and the oxygen, are they tied together or is the bond magnetic so actually that's a good that's a good question um you can undo it there is like looking specifically in the model in and of it in itself is the magnet is inside the hydrogen and the magnet on the oxygen is only on where the two pairs of valence electrons would be so this so is my question is do you need to unscrew the hydrogen or do you need, or is it just magnetic? Um, if you wanted to remove it, you just kind of pop it off. Okay. Yeah. Good question. No, because I'm, um, I do not, but you, you know, we started talking about it. I do mm -hmm. not think we can use this model for talking about ions and ionic bonding because they represent within the model, they represent both balanced bonds and ionic bonds with the magnet. So there's like no, if you really want to talk about ions and ionic bonding, there should be some kind of different modeling for both these bonds, which is not available in this model. Right. That's true, but um, but it will give a kind of a segue to like starting and talk about that. And then, like I had said before, with um, 
like the limitation of some models, that actually is an important topic of discussion. And if students discover that, like, hey, well, then how come, you know, this ionic bond works this way with this model? And how come this valence bond works this way? Like, why would that be different? And getting them to understand that that, that can be a limitation of it. You know, that's a good point. So what I would use this for would be um, um, trying to, because I had trouble putting the molecules back into the box, for instance. <laughs> so you can ask the kids like, uh, can you put all these molecules back in the box? And they see they have to kind of organize it a bit better, thus explaining the difference in the microscopic, at the microscopic level of the solid gas liquid uh, change but tell me wasn't there methane within the box yeah yeah i didn't actually these three different ones i didn't use um but yeah the, there is the there is a model of this gray atom bonded to three hydrogen so this is carbon actually um so it's not magnetic and if i bond it together you have ethane or ethene excuse me and then, of course, this, this one, this one hydroxyl group with one oxygen and one hydrogen bonded to it. So did you find out why they put ethane in the box? What would they be using it for? So in this case, um, so this one was more kind of modeling just hydrogen bonding itself and not showing much other than that this is one of the really common molecules that is present in nature because of the fact that carbon is so easy to bond to because it has four um, bonding sites, you know, four valence electrons. But in terms of the breadth of how it can be utilized, the this kit is most unique for its work with water. Can the ethane stick to the water? Because it's not meant to do hydrogen bonds. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have any magnets in the model. Oh, okay. Well, so it's... Okay. <laughs> it doesn't attach. It doesn't bond. Um, I was going to jump in real quick and just say, I know that you borrowed the molecular model set recently. So if there were limitations from the water molecule kit and you wanted to lead us in a uh, community of practice around how to use. Um, so finally uh, with, with my kids, I didn't use the water molecule kit. It was for myself at first to have fun. And I really <laughs> didn't. The only thing that I really thought was interesting was the organization liquid solid gas and I'd already done that so I didn't want to use it again but so this wooden molecule molecule kit is actually great it's maybe one of the most unfashionable ones I have but you can do perfectly double bonding triple bonding and the angles are right and it's really interesting uh, for that compared to the new kits that come out this old one is very good um, yeah I don't know what to say I it even, has, it even has springs in it, you know, so that way you can adjust um, the angle as well. I think that's really cool. Okay. cool. The only problem with that kit is that the hydrogens are yellow, so you have to walk through with the kids, the conventions or the color conventions and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Cool. Thank you, Asa. Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Anyone? I see there's a couple of things in the chat. Missed that a while ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else have a question? Have an idea how they might use this? Um, have a stroke of inspiration. I'd like to know who Nancy and Mary are, <laughs> my first American <laughs> colleagues I meet. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Mary. Uh, so I actually teach high school chemistry um, at the NetGen Tilly. 
Um, and I was thinking, I know, I think it actually might be after we teach ionic and um, the difference between then, you know, um, uh, you know, covalent bonds, and then we do a lab where they have to test the different. Um, and I know we use like salt and wax and sugar, and they test the various properties to see like which type of bond it must be. And I think we actually go into disassociation, like its ability to dissolve in water. So it's actually thinking, um, and then when we talk about covalent bonds, we do talk about like polarity. So just using it uh, for both that and to have them understand dissociation because they mm -hmm. have a really hard time with that. And I think this model would be super helpful for that. Um, so I was thinking more like that. And there is also like, sometimes I get time to do a mini unit on just water and how amazing it is with all its various properties. Uh, so that would be another way to a really cool thing I was thinking about using that, um, this model kit for. So those were just like three of the things that popped into my head. Oh, those are really good ideas. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and even like the kit itself, I know that, um, the PDF was sent out to you guys related to what came with the kit and the website. There's a lot of even additional resources on there, like pre-made PowerPoints where it makes it really easy to drag and drop like multiple of the molecules or, um, elements to be able to manipulate them on your projector screen so the kids can see it, or even if you put it on their uh, Google slide so they can manipulate it themselves. Hi, I'm Nancy and I teach uh, students, uh, high school students, chemistry and environmental science at uh, New Orleans Accelerated High School. And um, so I could use that model in both of my courses um, with both groups of students so well you think they will have fun with it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i actually have some um atomic model kits um that they could use so i could do demonstrations and then they could actually you know i could model for them and then have them to complete you know a reaction what they think the reactants uh would look like um mm -hmm something like that so yeah, yeah anything fun. anything hands-on um yeah they totally like not. yeah in all the ages too thank you it's nice to meet you the only thing i'd be uh careful mary to do ionic bonds is that as she showed previously the like the students will be able to stick any iron to any side. So it's a bit like, uh, I don't know, the positive can go to the positive and the negative to the negative. So that's the only thing. That's, if I it's think. in the middle on the sodium, it does that. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think they'll pay attention to the middle at first, to be honest. They'll just what? see it sticks and they won't like. Yeah, no, I appreciate you pointing that out again, um, especially because, you know, it's, it's an important part of the conversation with the students about uh, understanding magnetism and polarity and like how the positive and negative side of a magnet, how that can be used to model the negativity and the positivity of different sides of a polar molecule. Yeah. All right. Wait, what about Dora? Oh, Dora! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm Dora. I work too in the Lycée Français of New Orleans with Avka. Actually, she teach the, the chemistry and physics and I, I am the biologist of the team. So, um, but for me, you know, this kind of model uh, has, Avka already said, it's great to, to modeling the, the different state of water. And I have a question. Do you have this kind of... Um, modeling, but more for the, um, for the, um, to, to, to be able to, to imagine more about the um, organic chemistry, you know, like model, but more complex because this is a huge, um, this is a, a huge problem with, uh, with the students in general, the, the, the 
organic chemistry and if we have this kind of model yeah but it's not there is no magnets there is we we have the um, okay there's a Dora, there's a little box they have one little box with plastic they're smaller they're not magnets but they like kind of get the same shape as what you see now with the water but there's only one box uh, but, but importantly, uh, just to bring it up, um, as everyone on this call is currently a member of STEM Library Lab, you can request new items. So if there is something that you see one of, but you need more of, or something that you're imagining um, and you found online, or in the case of some teachers, uh, they have imagined a thing into existence. So we've created products for them that they were like, I wish there was a thing like this. Um, so those are all options for you. Dora, are you thinking more of like the organic molecules like in photosynthesis and cellular yeah. respiration? Yeah, the big, biggest yeah. molecule and to be able, you know, like to be able to construct, to construct a metabolism, like the, the way the sugar will, will be built or the way... Okay. Carbon you know, dioxide and yeah. molecules? Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah. the, the biology in the chemistry. <laughs> yeah, I I make I also teach biology, so I'm experiencing some of those pains. Some of the kids yeah. I've had for chemistry, so they're like, "Oh yeah, I remember this, Miss Mary." And other times, I'm like, "This kid has no idea what I'm talking about." <laughs> it's nice. I'm just saying chemical names at this point to them. <laughs> yeah. Sure, we have all the same problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this one you can like well it's not perfect it will be great to have something i don't i don't think it exists i don't know but, but you know a mix between the model uh sam have in his hand now and the magnet just to to understand why <laughs> why the the um, you know the oxygen um attracts more and but to have the, the right angles to you know, to have a, a mix between magnetic to understand the the uh, the strain of a of a bind. Yeah, and, and understand have the right angle in the same time. Like you're saying, like how even just with water, like how there's a, a greater pull to the negative side of oxygen rather than the positive side of hydrogen. Like that, that there's different levels of magnetic. Pulse. Yes, yes, it will be great if we have different level of magnetic. Mm -hmm. I think we should contact the company <laughs> and then tell our idea to them. Yeah. It's not for free. That's that's a good idea, Dora. Nobody yeah. else copy it. It was her idea. I I, I want eighty percent of the money, of course. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I remember using um, a really cool kit in organic chemistry in college like this, but it's, um, they're plastic and a little bit smaller. They, uh, but they're more expensive, but, um, but it worked in the very exact same way. And this, it didn't, it didn't have these cool uh, bending of the bonds here in this case, where it can show like how there's a a larger bond in between how hydrogen bonds it's like a lot of times it's not as strong as an ionic bond or certain covalent bonds and that kind of thing um, but what yeah. i like with this uh, other molecule molecule kit the one that uh, san is using is that in the plastic kits mostly they will have three carbon uh, spheres one with four holes, one with three, uh, and whatnot. you know, the holes in different places. And so you're like, when you give the box to the kids, you're like, you have to take the dark black sphere to start with. Oh, you have to take the gray sphere. But with this one, you just give them the black sphere. And if there's a hole left, you go like, oh, the carbon is not happy. Look in the kit what you can do. And then they change the bond rather than changing the sphere. Yeah, it has um, actually, like, for example, this one, there's only one hole in it. So you know that this particular one is modeling. Well, Sam, element. I've never seen that one in all the ones, the kids, my yeah. kids. Show me that one. What color is it? An <laughs> this one here, it's kind of like a purple color. It has only one hole. Yeah, yeah. No, what I mean is when one, if you take, if you take the red ones, you only have oxygens with two holes on mm -hmm. two different sides. 
in the some the molecule water. kits, you will yeah. have two different red spheres, one with one hull on each side and one with two hulls on the same side. Yeah, this one is clearly nitrogen because it has three holes in it. Can you make can you make an H uh, um, can you make CO two for us, please? CO two. So she's starting like the pupils will with the wooden sticks, and then. You'll be like, oh, but what's happening? None of them are happy. They have holes everywhere. And then they will have to, so oh yeah, there's, um, there's, there are springs in the box. Let's use the springs and see. Mm. And so without changing the, the spheres, you just change the bonds. And that's easier, I think. Last year I was using yeah, I was using a kit where they had to change the, the, the sphere and so they wouldn't understand that they were actually using the same carbon. Look at that. Thank you, Africa. <laughs> You're awesome. So, this was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I appreciate you guys all coming and um, please feel free to reach out to me and my name is Sam Dacrusher at gmail.com or also I'm on Instagram with Ask Wonder Explore. Ask Wonder Explore. Um, if you're interested, I dropped a piece. And I'm sure Todd wants to close us out real nice and pretty. So Todd, take it away. Yeah. Um, thanks y'all so much for, for joining us um, on our first community of practice of 2021. Let's see. There it is. Um, all right. So uh, the next steps are pretty simple. We're going to send you a, a, a real short Google survey just to get your feedback on this. Um, as I mentioned, there is a gift card associated with having attended, uh, and we'll send information on how you can redeem that as well. Um, we'd like to um, we'd like to make this a regular thing, and so um, would love to hear your feedback on topics that you'd either like to learn about or might be interested in sharing with other people. Um, and then other than that, please follow us on social media. Um, I think that's it. Thanks so much for joining. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir, Nancy, Marie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Au revoir. Yeah. Au revoir, Nancy. <laughs> Bye, Todd. Thanks, Sam. Bye, y'all. Thank you for coming. Have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining. <laughs>